I want you to do one exercise. Just close your eyes, okay? No cheating. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine yourself in the kitchen. On the gas, water is boiling. In the bedroom, the children are screeching. The dog is barking. The doorbell is ringing. And your husband is nicely sitting on the couch watching TV with the volume turned up. Now, if you would describe your feeling in one word, what would that be? Frustration. Isn't it? How do we deal with such frustrations in life? Well, you don't need to worry about how to do that. We have somebody with us who is very, very special, the apple of God's eye and the sweetheart of our team and of each one of us who needs no introduction. Join me in welcoming Anastasia Ribello, our very own, who will teach us how to deal with frustrations in life. Honestly, I cannot say how to deal because we are dealing with frustrations every moment, right? I'm learning as much as you. We ladies like everything micromanaged, am I right? I told you things should have been done. But God teaches us even through our mundane situations, as long as we don't blow this lid, everything is in control. This still is okay. I remember many, uh, I think, Maria has been with eight women alive, but Maria has been with us for the uh, four women alive of, uh, that have happened. And I remember one year at the seminary, there was this guy who, the same backdrop that you see is there for every woman alive. And he gave me a call and said, no, ma'am, in the evening we are doing it. Because in those days, seminary is double the size. We have a sound check one day prior, all that. I said, uh, he says, I said, when will you put it up? He said, evening. I said, great. But at around 9.30 in the night, he gave me a call and he's saying, you know what? Ma'am, how to enter the seminary? I said, what? And I'm thinking to myself, I said, now, is he going to go there and start doing, there are three bishops living there, talk to, talk to. I said, God willing, there's a side door to the main stage. If that is open, you go in. God always provides. Like I said, today it was Anita. That time three brothers came down and they took them in. And I decided that night, no matter what happens, I pray, I go to sleep, I wake up in the morning. Backdrop, no backdrop, we will still conduct women alive. And what I want to say, all glory to God, we face hitches every time. It's never perfect. But with God, everything is possible. So let's give a mighty hand of praise to our faithful God. Before I begin sharing God's word, I'd like you to repeat this prayer after me. Merciful God, anoint us with your Holy Spirit. That as we listen to your word, may we hear... Your voice speak to us from within. Give us the wisdom to understand your word. Let your word be the joy of my heart and a light to my feet. Give me the strength to build my life upon your word. May I rejoice in the blessedness of hearing your word and keeping it. Speak, Lord, your servants listening. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. All of us deal with frustrations, as I said earlier, and we are dealing it every day. Last two years have been a pandemic where we have gone through different kind of frustrations from probably relationship issues to financial problems to children because we were all living in the same house and at very close corners. What happens when two people live together? 
static electricity, right? So sparks are flying all over. But today is our day to make things new because I do not understand what I do, what I do, what I do not, but what I hate to do. But if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. And it is no longer myself who is doing it, but the sin that is living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, and keep doing it. Now if you do, I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I, but it is sin living in me. So we face this, I know sometimes it's, say, it's very easy to blame it on the devil, right? He made me do it. It began where? In the very first book. Maria was talking. She only came to the 27th verse. What was that? In the Garden of Eden, what was happening? In the Garden of Eden, there was a game, blame, blame game that was going on. No? When God asked Adam what he said, the woman said, woman says the serpent. And we go on with it every day, right? So we are frustrated with ourselves. We look at ourselves. Like she said, we are created in the image and likeness of God. Beautifully and wonderfully made. Like I have shared this, those who have come for women and I will know this one joke. I love to crack, but even there was a seven-year-old boy who went to his mother and asked him, whose image and likeness are we created? And the mother turned around and told him, we are created in the image and likeness of God. And then he goes to the father, whose image and likeness are we created? And the father tells him, our ancestors were apes, monkeys, and now we are men. Boy is confused. The boy went back to the mother. Mom, whose image and likeness are we created? And she, he, he's, again she starts, we are created in the image and likeness of God. Wonderfully and beautifully made. So, but Dada is saying, we are created, in, our ancestors were apes, monkeys and men. So she looked at him and told him, Dada is talking about his side of the family. I'm talking about my side of the family. So you decide on whose side of the family. So today, we are frustrated sometimes with ourselves, the way we are, the way we look, what we are doing. Sometimes we are frustrated with our faults. We keep doing the same mistake again and again. And the areas we need to do. But I want to tell you something. Many years ago, I had met an, not a, uh, a man from another faith. His family was known to me. So they bought him for counseling. And I'm stressing on this. Expectation sometimes leads to disappointment. Disappointments will lead to frustrations. This man was very disappointed because people in the north, generally in Bombay city, we don't talk of having civil, working for civil services. Am I right? We always talk about how much money, MBA, this and But in the north, you generally have become an IS officer. You want to work in the army. You want to work in the navy. Okay. This man had those dreams. And none of his kids fulfilled those dreams. So he was very, very depressed. And he says, I gave them the best. Best education, best bringing up, everything that I did. But they did not. I am disappointed. So I asked him only one question. I said, did you ask them what do they want to become? He said, no, I thought I knew it well. And so some of us here who are sitting sometimes when you're listening to me, you will say, I have so many expectations and my children have not fulfilled them. I'd like to quote Bishop Fulton Cheney's to say, really we will ask our children, what does God want you to become in life? Because we are scared of the answer. We will always ask them, what do you want to become in life? Am I right? How many of us ask our children, what does God want you to become? We don't know. God and all is all praying is one part. What do you want to become in life? And so the story goes even for ourselves. No matter what age you are, no how young you are or old you are, have you ever asked yourself, God, what do you want me to do? Because when you answer that question and when he answers it for you, you will be satisfied with yourself. 
Till that day, we will all be running in circles because we have two wars going inside of us, two. One is the war against good and evil or flesh versus spirit or the war begins grace versus guilt. Sometimes you do things which are not, you slip. Things that have gone wrong. Like if you read the woman at the well, how many, women, how many husbands did she have? Come on, tell me that. Ah, and what does the Lord tell her? What does the Lord tell her? Even the one you are staying with is not your own, right? Okay. And but he, the, she re receives the living water. And what does she do? She goes to the village and say, look what the man told me. Where was she living? In grace. But you must read that passage again. She, Lord doesn't ask her, why you got so many husbands? Suppose somebody had come to us, you're a sinner, you don't even know what you did. No, he doesn't ask. He's not asking us today. If you completed whatever the sin, grave, small, big, he's not asking you. He's asking you to be forgiven with the grace of God. And so, if the battle is between us and the Lord, probably we would be at peace. I'm telling you, it's easy to fight with him. Okay? But the battle is with people who irritate us. So what we are in? We are in pieces. That man never changed. The children don't listen. I, I'm, I'm actually, every year I'm amazed to see over 200 women sitting and listening to Women Alive. Seminary is exactly double this number. Because I always feel, we feel nobody can do anything. How can I go? My whole house will collapse. Am I right? Yeah. And then when they don't do it, we are in pieces. Like I remember many years ago, my younger son, he'll come in the second half today. He's playing music for the church. And uh, one year I was going for his open day. I wasn't here, so when I came back, um, he, I was going for his open day, but as I was going up the stairs, he happened to tell, Mom, I'm not done so well. I think it's not, it's not happening. Uh, I'm not secured. I think my marks won't be good this year. And all. After some time, he's telling me, you're not reacting. You're not getting upset. So I turned around and told him, Jonathan, it doesn't write on the certificate Anastasia Rebello. It says Jonathan Rebello. <laughs> so I played that one on him. And then, of course, it was amusing. But I thought to myself, how often do we take their mistakes as our mistakes? You got me? Don't take your children, okay? They made a mess, you have made a mess. I can, if I take a show of hands, there's not a single one that's sitting in this crowd has not made a mistake. Every one of us has made a mistake. So we have to get out of that guilt and get into the period of grace. Because I learned this on this journey of recovery or this journey of holiness. Things don't change. People don't change. Last one, you do. You know, sometimes when my kids were younger, and I have four children, by the way, okay? And uh, of course, today one is not with me. He's in another country, but I have four children and then I'm blessed with another six. So I'm normally, like I have a crowd of plenty. I will have it around, like you remember many years ago, I was taking, they were much younger, now they've grown. I was getting into the car and my driver was there and then these 10 children followed me and my girls, who work in my home, they were looking from the window and then suddenly they're saying, those men down, ma'am, they were saying, Kitna bacha hai ye bach lady ka was. How many kids does this lady have? But with all that, sometimes I have not been a perfect mother. I have had difficulties. But with the grace of God, there are a lot of things that can work. A lot of things that can work. Like I remember Elena, you know, I should say, Elena and I are on the same team in Jesus the Real Vine. My, my, uh, rather, my journey with the Lord, I complete this 21st of May, 25 years, okay, of serving and meeting the Lord. And Elena and I have been on that team. Like when she was telling me, she spoke about this Dubai thing, and I remember, oh God, it was my birthday when we celebrated uh, 28th of uh, October and it was so special we have gone so many places uh, and but I always think today when I look back my kids were younger and God still enabled thanks to the support of my husband and my family that I was able to 
minister and share God's word. Even when studying, I was pregnant with Simone. Simone is the one who's playing the keyboard today. And I remember sometimes when I used to go, the priest would look at me. Nobody knows you're pregnant, right? I said, yes. So you want to tell? He says, no. But Anastasia, you'll continue? I said, yes, I will. And I'm grateful to the Lord. While studying, Simone was there later years, of course, came in Jonathan. But I learned something in those times. And this was because, not because of me, because the holy priest by the name of Father Benji, a Jesuit priest who molded me for 18 years, he used to always tell me, Anastasia, things don't change, people don't change, you do. And you will not be disappointed with that because sometimes we pretend that all things are okay, right? No, no, like suppose somebody came to your house, your parish priest came to your house, your decibels are very loud, and suddenly you come and say, welcome father. Good morning, Father. Have you seen that? And sometimes they say, I can't help it. That's the way I am. I always blow the lid. But you know, you can yell at people you love. You won't do it outside in an office. Will you do it in people in the office? You're worried about your job. So you'll put your best front and go. And so we keep doing. So I request you today, stop blaming people or others. We take responsibility is the first step. Making excuses helps us repeat the thing over and over again. With God's help, I can do it. So two things I want you to remember today. Though we are not doing a teaching on God's love, God loves you very, very much. With your faults, with everything, and he loves you unconditionally. You know, David in the Old Testament was a God, man after God's own heart. But he was a murderer and an adulterer. But you know, in the book of Psalms, you'll read, he says beautifully, search me, O God, and know my thoughts, and see if there is any wicked way within me. But God, do not take your Holy Spirit away from me, and lead me to the everlasting. Make this your prayer. Now, even as you're listening to me today, and you'll be going through this journey, Ask yourself, God, what is it that you want me to give? Because this is a day for renewal. And... From bitter people, we become better people with the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm very happy to say this is the eighth program. But from bitterness, if you become better people. Like Maria says, we illuminate Christ. When people look at you, they want what you have. They want what you will share with others. And they don't want grumpy people. Pope Francis, I like to quote him, a gloomy Christian is... Not a good witness for Christ. I'm not using exact words, but he says it's an he says it's a bad witness for Christ. Like if you're gloomy and you're sad, please even holy people are not meant to be like this. Some please, nobody wants to look at you. They want to look at you when you're happy and you're full of life. So the Holy Spirit helps us. He convicts us, even if you make mistakes. Honestly speaking, I want to share with you. I'm very short fuse. Okay. I am very short fuse. I literally, I can blow like this. But over the years, I've learned. I'll tell you how. My husband is there today. I don't know whether he's gone or not. Uh, you know, many years ago when I got married, okay, he's very, even today you'll see, he's cracking a joke on everything. You get, like sometimes you get irritated. Like, you know, I had my earlier, my niece staying with me for five years today. Her sister's here with us. She would wake up in the morning and this fellow would start, good morning. And he, she would say, what's good about the morning? That was the first. Why are you so happy in the morning? Anyway, this is when we got married and, you know, he told me something. Uh, that, you know, once it is 12 o'clock, it is over. I love to argue. Okay. So before getting married, you are so much in love. You say, yes, done. But after getting married, it's difficult. You have to settle some issues. And he used to say, 12 o'clock, it's done. I said, what rubbish. But after a year, I said, is this man useless fighting with him? So I stopped. No use, because 12 o'clock, it's done. And I was a girl, like Maria said, tomboy. I was a tomboy, I won't say. Like even when I'm talking about frustrations, my father put double locks on my Aka at the age of 16. Because I learned driving, not because I wanted to learn driving. I learned driving because all my friends who were boys knew driving. So I was wanted to be one upon them. So one day, dad put two logs. 
I, if he parked his car somewhere and went to buy something, I used to take the car and park it in another place. He comes out of that shop, he's searching. And then I would come from the back and, when will you stop this? But I'm trying to say I was not perfect. And so when I learned God's word, the book of Ephesians says, do not let the sun go down on your anger, lest you give the devil a room. So today you can make that decision that God does not condemn us. He knows our nature. He knows we are not perfect. But he lifts us up. He would not push us down because all transformation happens with the Holy Spirit. We are different. Of, we have all different kind of walls. In fact, I'm just quoting Elijah. Elijah is plowing an unfe- a field that is not, you know, it takes a lot to plow a hard ground. We, when we have the seed of frustration, it's like an unplowed ground. Like suppose you can see this greenery, unless it's tilled. Like the other day I was at Bethel and I was telling them because the heat is a little harsh. I said, you know, if you don't dig this and uproot the soil a little bit, the trees will die because there are those ferns that are there. They need a little water extra. They are telling me, ma'am, now the, they need more water. I said, next one month we will have an issue because of the rains till the rains come but you need to till that soil the garden won't get our hearts are like this today you need to till your heart bring to surface what is taken because God draws out things which you have never thought of for example I'm talking to you now in light of your children or anyone close to you how long did it take to take Moses out of the water you know They were killing and then his mother put him in a basket. But it took hardly a short time to take him out of the water. But if you read Moses' life, it took God many years to make him a leader. You know, if God has called you for a particular purpose, that's my second talk. It might take God some time. But with your cooperation, instead of you saying, I'm frustrated, like I, I can't remember which scientist, but one of the scientists was told, who, I think it was Thomas Edison, which said that, you know, you had a hundred or thousand experiments uh, that failed. And he said, I learned the 999 that didn't work, but the one that worked. Every day today, you might be having mundane issues, temper tantrums. It may take some time to take the baby out of the cradle. But those who have daughters, it may take some time to get the woman out of them. God had patience with us. He has patience with them too. We set it on our clocks, not on his clocks. So let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Whoever has God lacks nothing because God alone suffices. Not my words, in trees of Avila. You know, you know, she was asked to start another congregation. And when she goes to meet a very important person, she falls in the muck. Can you believe what happens? She had no time to go home and change and come. And then she tells the Lord something. And the Lord says... Couldn't you have saved me, no? Because she has fallen, no? Like sometimes we are frustrated. We are cooking and things are not getting done. Huh? And the Lord says, no, I... And she has fallen and she's to meet this person. So she doesn't have time to go home and change. He says, I only do it to my friends. So then she turns around and tells the Lord, that's why you have very few friends. <laughs> so today, when you're going through a disturbance, remember you are in the right company. You are in the right company of Jesus. So Romans 7, the verse that I'm talking to you about is Romans 7, 15 to 20, which says, things I do, I do not want to do. So we take responsibility for our behavior. We are around people whom we want to impress. We will stop making excuses. And the thing of self-rejection, guilt, shame, uh, which damage ourselves and others has to go. Sometimes I've got people in counseling who tell me that, you know, we pull our hair, we are unhappy with ourselves. Stop looking at someone else and start looking at yourselves as a gift. You are a gift from God. And every gift is very, very special. You that are sitting here, my dear sisters, are very special. So stop hating yourself. Like Elena said, when we go through pain, we go through deep 
you know, sometimes it's not depression, sometimes it may be deep self of loneliness, things that are happening. But remember, you're not alone. The Lord is with you. So get a revelation of God's love. First thing, he loves you unconditionally. He knows who you are. Like I always remember, you know, Fiona's mom knows me from the age of two. So earlier when we had Jesus the real mind, those who have come to Jesus the real mind will know what I'm talking about. It is, it is a huge crowd, okay? And uh, after I would minister from um, the stage, she would come and stand right in front of me. And she would look at me like this. I can't believe. And I used to say, auntie, miracles happen. Yeah, with all the mischief that you did, I can't believe. You can understand? So, but I learned something. My father in heaven loves me unconditionally. My earthly father also loves me very much. No father will let their daughter do the things I did, okay? He loves me even today. Today we don't fight on, what is that? Uh, we don't fight on car and things like that. We talk on scripture. Like uh, one morning, he is very gifted with scripture. I'm still, I think I don't reach that one. Uh, one morning he calls me. What is Ephesians chapter 6 verses 2 and 3? I said, yes, dad, it is honor your father and mother so that all may go well with you. So then I turned around and asked him, dad, what is Ephesians 6 verses 5? I don't know. Fathers don't provoke your children lest they retaliate. <laughs> so he turned around and I didn't see it. I said, you will not see it. Because, but sometimes, you know, we, as, you know, even as knowing that your heavenly father loves you is something will, which will help you to the next step, to love yourself in a balanced way. Okay? Because you will love yourself in spite of your faults. You will love yourself for your imperfections and your perfections. And finally, if you can love yourself, only then you can love others. If you can't love yourself, you can't give what you don't have. You can only give what you have. So, the Holy Spirit is the one who will help you. All of us need to be genuine. Don't be fake. If you're angry, say you're angry. And the Holy Spirit convicts us of our behavior. He helps us change. And you cannot change by yourself. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to not be conformed to the world, but transformed by renewing your mind so that you may know what is the will of God, what is perfect and pleasing to God. Do not be conformed to the standards of the world. If you are conformed to the standards of the world, you will always live a life that is frustrated. So, how to be transformed by the Spirit is first thing sin and repentance. Whenever sin is there, I need to repent. That is the purgative step. You know what is purgative? Uh, I think people will know. Why used to take castor oil in old days? You can ask the aunties that are sitting here, the younger ones. It's a laxative to clean yourself. So purge yourself first from the sin. Secondly, don't live a day without God's word. It illuminates your heart. You'll never be frustrated if you have illumination of the heart. And finally, worship and proclamation is the unitive step. Once you come into the presence of God, automatically you are transformed. You are no longer the same. You become a generous person, not only in finances, not only, you become a generous person towards others. Even in your home, you will not say, why am I doing all this work? Nobody else is there. I'm the only one doing. You will not do it. Then to do things for the world is very easy. But charity begins at? So key is to deepen our relationship with God. And he chastises only those he loves. Learn to confess your mistakes wherever there is a confession. Saints are made. Wherever there is blaming, the devil is there. Whom do you want? Whom do you want? Jesus, right? So do whatever he tells you. John chapter 2 verse 5, it's a miracle at Cana where Mother Mary tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. Today he's telling you and me, do whatever he tells you. We will focus today on the merciful love of God which purifies us and we'll reject Satan and sin so that we can reconcile ourselves with 
God. So the heart of repentance, you know, again I quote for Pope Francis here. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, I've come to give you life. The thief comes to steal, destroy, but I have come to give you life and life in all its abundance. In Pope Francis' article in Lent 2020 where he said that we listen instead to the tempting voice of the fathers of life and we risk sinking in the abyss of absurdity, experiencing hell on earth as all to the many tragic events in the personal and collective human experiences that sadly bear witness. Please do not listen to the father of lies. There is hope for everyone. Listen to the father of mercy. How? Compare your sin to the coronavirus. What did we do till some time ago? Come on. What were we doing? We were we were very concerned about. Even today, many do wear and it's good if you wear, okay? But for us standing here, like Maria said, you all are cool down here, we are full of fire up here. And to swiftly act, if today you're experiencing some kind of turbulence, request a priest, go for a confession. It will make you feel much, much lighter. So there are four hours, I will tell you, Everyone knows Luke's Gospel, chapter 14. The first thing is, you realize, okay? Realization is the first step. I've been frustrated, I've been angry, I've made mistakes. Realization is the first step. The second step to reconcile is resolution. What we make on New Year's Day every time? Resolution. That I won't go back. The third step is repentance. Repentance is not saying I am sorry, okay? Repentance comes from a Greek word called metanoia, meaning I want to change. And finally, God will restore all that the, the devil has taken. And so I leave you with this thing, car. So the first thing is change what you can do with the help of the Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 4.13 says, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. A, accept. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And finally, rise above your situation. Rise above your situation. Do not look back. Because brothers and sisters, I know that I have not yet reached the goal. But there's one thing I do, forgetting the past and straining to the goal that lies ahead. I keep trying to reach the goal and get the prize for which Christ called me to Christ to the life above. So one thing we do, we strain ahead.